Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It is Wednesday night, and we are live. Hi! And Lou is live as well. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, it is said Wednesday night, and we're live. We've got uh, our guest with us today, which is Stephen Chapman. He's a 3D artist, and uh, he's going to be chatting with us today about various bits and bobs. It's been a bit of a slow week this week for all of us, um, as per the last three or four weeks. Me, Lou, and Steve haven't played any games at all. Because <laughs> we're awful people. I'm actually looking through my Steam library now, trying to remember what I've downloaded. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's atrocious at the moment. But luckily, Stephen, our guest, has been to EGX recently, so... Which, uh... Represent. Yeah, representing. <laughs> and um, and there's, there's a fair amount of news. There's a few rumours that are a, a bit interesting that, that we're going to talk about this week. Uh, hello, Sudo in chat. Hello, uh, Oki. Oki? Oki. Egg Oki. I always get people's names wrong. You know who, <laughs> you know who it is. Anyway, so, um, Stephen, I'll let you introduce yourself. Tell everybody what you're about, if you've got any projects on you're working on or anything like that. Awesome. Um, yeah, I'm Stephen. Hello, the one and only. Well... Not the only, but still. Um, yeah, I do 3D art and things, um, mainly environment stuff. Um, I do a fair bit of other 2D work and stuff, though, as well. Um, at the moment, I've got a few projects on the go, um, some portfolio pieces I'm doing, and then I've got my main project at the moment that's in super early stages, um, but is kind of a flat-shaded, low-poly style game. Um, based on exploration of environments because, you know, I'm an environment artist and that's what I do. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I'd say it's in very early stages at the moment, but there are pictures that I put on my Twitter like every five minutes usually when I do some work. <laughs> Just like, look at the stuff I did, shit, it's pretty. We, as I keep saying to everybody, shameless self-promotion is the only way to get ahead in this world, exactly, unfortunately. Yeah. You might have yes. a thousand, two thousand, whatever, how many followers, none of them care. Not a single no. one of them cared, but, you know, nope. it is what it is. Unless you stay, of course, stay with his yeah. 30, maybe less followers, something like that. <laughs> the king of Twitter. He <laughs> doesn't even go on Twitter, he doesn't care. He's got his, no. he's got his Twitter tag below him, but no, don't, don't bother. I yeah. have 30 followers. <laughs> exactly, <yeah. laughs> What are the following? <laughs> exactly, nothing at all. I think I've seen one tweet from you ever. Um, and I don't know when that was. And it was the greatest tweet of all time. It was. Only, it's only I, enjoyed I, by I realised then that I could never top it, so I just... Nah. Is, <laughs> is your your info on Twitter says something like the, the, the man, the legend, something, something really epic. <laughs> I can't remember exactly what it is now. I'm sure Lou will... Go on Twitter. Oh, it might be that uh, that Doug Neil, of it's course. A, it's, it's, it's Rob Grant, isn't it? Ah, oh, right, yeah, yeah, right. Rob, Rob Grant. Grant. Yeah, it's Rob, Rob Grant. He starts one of his books with that. Anyway, code. everyone get on Twitter and follow at Papy. Is it at Papy? Yeah. 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 No, at no, Papy, yeah, just so he can come on Twitter and start doing things with it, with us. And that He can actually start maybe Matt helping to manage the Twitter <laughs> he account. He pressure the man into tweeting. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've tried so, tweeting, it wasn't as fun as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> no. I, I, it took me a little bit to get into it, I have to be honest with you. It, I, I, and yeah. the only thing that Twitter is good for, in my eyes, is is to promote something. You know, yourself, your brand. I'm, I, I quite enjoy the game dev aspect, you know, aspect of it, and getting involved with other game devs and artists. Excuse yeah. me. Or following <laughs> people, but a lot of people go on there and just follow celebrities, don't they? So I suppose everyone yeah. just uses it differently. I, I see it as more of a, like a business card, really. It's like every time you tweet someone, it's a little business card. There you go. Have yeah, that. until you get involved in, uh, inadvertently get involved in some kind of racist rant or... Oh, God, not, yeah. Not, no, from, it's not quickly... from yourself, I mean, somebody else is inadvertently. Yeah, yeah and you're like, in. delete, delete, delete. <laughs> or spying on people, as Pseudo in chats just said, which I think is That's, uh, yeah, good enough. good for that. Um, so, yes, uh, just a very quick parental advisory. We do swear on this show. I don't know if we've sworn yet, actually, but um, we usually do have a bit of swearing. Well, we so fucking you, well now. If you're offended, <laughs> please uh, go. We also say penis as well, and unfortunately penis offended somebody last week. That did, didn't it? it did. That somebody, more than anything else. Somebody left chat as soon as I said sorry, but penis is not an offensive word. <laughs> ah, yeah. and they, it's they, an offensive they, object. They came back in, though. The, the show after that, we had a show on Saturday as well, and um, they, they came back in that, that day to Morbid watch for a curiosity, little bit. Chris. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. They wanted to see if we'd say <laughs> vagina instead. Yeah. Keep it what equal, it equal rights. Yeah. <gasps> yes, yes. <laughs> um, so yes, um, thank you everybody for watching. And if you are if you are interested in um, you know getting involved please do say something in chat. We're on Hitbox as well, hitbox.tv forward slash Resonance Arcade today and twitch.tv forward slash Resonance Arcade. We have attempted to stream to YouTube live, but it's too much of a faff, I have to be honest with you. <laughs> um, I've already said vagina, and that's the second time I've said vagina 
So th- That's third, a third actually. Yes. I'm doing a Fred Durst over here. First, <laughs> no, anyway, um, yeah, so anyway, well, first of all, we'll start off. We, we, we've added a, a new segment to the show over the last couple of weeks, um, which is basically just give the guests a little bit of an interview, get get people to, to know them. So I'm going to let Lou or Steve choose the first question to ask Stephen from our list or anything else that you've, you might have thought of. It's not in our list. Does it? All right, I was going to say I was going to say something more related to what Stephen actually does, which is environment art. So, how did you get into that? Um, I got into environment art. I at first off, I had no idea it was what I wanted to do. I started off doing video editing things, and I decided I wanted to try and do like video After Effects um, and kind of post production stuff. Then I decided, well, actually, I want to do CGI, and then I realized I need to learn how to model properly to do that. So I picked up some modeling packages, started playing around, and I was like, I quite like doing environments. And then began working on some kind of smaller projects and then thought, well, hang on, these would be quite good for games as well. And then went along to a local game society, got more involved in games, and then just kind of, it, it grew from that. It wasn't really a case of, you know, oh, I want to do environments. It was just a case of through eventually going from video editing and doing post-production to I do environment art in games somehow. Through yeah. some weird train of thought. It's kind of how it's kind of how I've got into everything in my life, though. I've I've started out small and then ended up going, oh, I, oh, this is leading to this. Oh, this is leading to yeah. this. Game dev is kind of a natural uh, extension of all of my other hobbies that I've done over yeah. many many years. It's quite unusual that you haven't come the route of um, <laughs> like map design or anything like that. I, I think a lot of early people who got into that did it through very simplistic map making tools. I remember Steve and I used to play a lot with um with the build editor for Duke Nukem mm. and, and make all kinds of architectural monstrosities. Until you got a non Euclidean worlds where you walk through a, a wall and go into a different universe and stuff like that. But <laughs> it's interesting to see that you've approached it from a, a case of well, you almost serendipitous. Yeah, you, you accidentally yeah. fell into it, didn't you? So. Yeah, I mean, the, the most I did before that when I was probably about eight years old, I opened up Valve Hammer Editor once and made, like, a wall, and that was about <laughs> it. <laughs> I, I, I probably, this was when I was, like, eight years old. I should have known better, surely. <laughs> never never heard of that myself. <laughs> so it's basically, it's, it's basically before Source. It's, like, what they used to build, like, Half-Life 1. Oh, and right. that kind of stuff. Also, it's um, like a BSP editor, then. It's, uh, it's, it's like uh, Bill Quick. Basically, yeah. Quick edit type Worldcraft. Thing. It was based on Worldcraft, wasn't it? Um, I'm not um, 100% sure of all of yeah, it, but I know it was... It was Worldcraft yeah. for Quake and Quake 2, and then the um, the adapted it um, and called it Hammer. It used to be Worldcraft. Yeah. I'm sure of it. I said, I just, I just remember horrific BSP leaks and computers <laughs> grinding to a halt because you didn't... You know what was it? What was it called when you had to? You, you got you had to vis the map. Vis, that's it. Um, yeah, vis yeah. everything. Uh, yes. Um, okay. So good. Cool. I'm, yeah. uh, I said I, I've I've recently realised how much work is in environment art. It's <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, especially if you're doing anything that's uh, like high poly, anything that's got a lot of a lot of fidelity to it. Texturing all this new PBR stuff that's coming to Unity 3D as well. Oh, well, not just Unity 3D. I, I say that because I'm a Unity whore myself. But <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's been in Unreal for a while. It's I'm sure it's been around much longer than that. In fact, there's been workflows uh, developed since there. But all of that is brand new as well, all completely new. But I'm getting to a point where I'm starting to understand it. I'm a programmer to those who are new watching. I don't get involved in art if I can help it. But um, yeah, it's people like we you all that... sigh a big, <laughs> big sigh of relief that Chris doesn't get yeah. into art. I've uh, I've I said I've recently done some programmer art and put it on my t- on, my, on my Twitter, and uh, it's not terrible, <laughs> I don't think, but it's not good. <laughs> you know, it's it's I can, maybe it's passable, maybe. But yeah, the less I do, the better. Yeah. Right. Um, so I'm going to ask you just a simple question. We ask everybody, what's your favourite game of all time? Oh, see, now this this is a hard choice. You, you put me on the spot here. Now, <laughs> oh, I don't know. Like, the, the temptation would be to go straight along with something like Half-Life because that's the game that got into, kind of got me into games and basically kind of made my love of games on PC especially kind of stronger than, like you know, any kind of consoles that are around at that time. So I think, like, NES, things like that. Hmm. Um, it was always a case of PC and you know half-life for me but then there's things like unreal tournament as well which i spent <laughs> hours so to pick one's really difficult if i had to pick one though at a push 
I'd probably say Half-Life captured me more, even though I probably spent more time overall on things like Unreal Tournament, just shooting people's heads on So you're, an, F- <laughs> you're an FPS guy then, basically. You, you like your FPSs um, over anything else. I, I would say my, my taste has changed as I've kind of gotten older. But yeah, definitely when I was kind of at that influential age where games were like a much bigger part of my life like they're still big now but playing games when you're a kid like you do it for like six seven hours a day like straight and that's that at the moment i get about half an hour now to sit down look at the options menu and something go yeah my pc can run it (laughs) and then quit the game and do some art and stuff um yeah um, yeah definitely around them that's our problem at the moment i said we have we unfortunately haven't got any games to talk about this week me lou and steve but we (laughs) we uh we, I mean, I usually get maybe one day a week at the moment that I, I say, right, that's it, not working today, I'm not doing any of my hobbies, I'm going to play some, well, my hobbies, you know what I mean, I'm not going to, my yeah. gaming's one of my hobbies, but I'm going to actually play some games. Last week, it was Saturday night, and I started playing games at 11pm and finished at 2 o'clock in the morning, and usually I go to bed at 10 o'clock, so it's, <laughs> that's the only time yeah. I got any chance. It's only because the, the missus went to bed early. Yeah, Have you got any, the, uh, go on, well, sorry, nope. Uh, I was going to say, I think the, the the most gaming I've done recently was in the past few days at um, Rezzed. Like that's, I, th- I think that's probably the most in at least the last month or so. Mm-hmm. I haven't managed to sit down and try to proper crack through something. Um, we, I we, try and set myself a target of doing one game every month, like actually sitting down and completing something. It never happens. No. no I've, uh, we should do that. We should. We should, I'll really. But yeah, it's, I, what I tend to do at the moment is I'll play a batch of indie games so I can get... Like, I, I don't really want a game with story at the moment because I don't have time to invest in it. I started playing Wolfenstein The New Order again a couple of weeks ago. I haven't went back to it because I'm like, it's too cerebral. I know it's not. It's, it's a dead... You know, it's, I meant it's too, it's too cerebral for me at the moment because my brain yeah. is constantly thinking about game dev and, and my work stuff. So, yeah. So what caught you out at res then? What would you say would be the, the thing that made you gasp in astonishment and fall back and So let's cry. let's talk about that in a minute. I'm gonna stop yeah. you there because oh, we, we're okay. going to move on to the games in a, in a second. I want to ask him a few more questions first. Steve, well, have I you was, got anything? Uh, yeah, I was going to ask Steve first. So from all the games you've played, what the a game environment, I suppose, is have you appreciated the most has kind of have caught, has caught your eye as a designer? So, environments. Oh God, um, there's there's a fair few of them. Like I, I'm heavily influenced by kind of science fiction things. So I, I love all the sci-fi stuff, like the yeah. the early kind of Unreal Tournament maps, like things like Deck and all that, where it's kind of really grungy and there's pipes yeah, yeah. everywhere and it's all running. Like that's kind of a lot of what I like to do um, with my like kind of. I say spare time, I don't have a lot of it, but if things that aren't portfolio, just like personal projects, I'll sit there and I'll just model some sci-fi stuff together. Um, for actual kind of games where I've just played them and kind of have been immersed in the world, I'd probably say most recently would be something like The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, because um, the way they actually did all the environments on that are really, really nice, and it kind of makes the world more believable. Um, Overall, absolute favourite environment though would probably be the entirety of City Seventeen from Half Life Two. Oh that, yes, yeah, that was... that was an amazing environment. I love. What's the... the name of the guy who designed that? Uh, it's so a shame that I don't actually know. Same guy who worked on Dishonored. Um, I know that the whole Victor com- Antonov. Yeah. Oh, the whole—it's the combine, isn't it, in Half Life Two as well? Yeah. yeah. It, it's that's the main like force behind yeah. it yeah sorry i forget these things um the the combine design the design of the soldiers i always think about them whenever i think about good character design you know in terms of uh, antagonists or, or mobs i always like that i just like that clean kind of black and white feel yeah. to them i don't know there's something about that that always shines in my head um all right uh, i was just thinking what other questions we can ask you before we move on <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a, a bit of a, a left field one. All right. What's in your fridge right now? In my fridge right now. Oh, I think we've got some got some wafer ham for sandwiches. Probably got some milk. Couple of lemons. <laughs> um, we've we've got like a little drink <coughs> thing that you kind of basically you put a block in the freezer, and then you just like cut some lemons up, pour the water into like a big kind of. Var- well basically it looks like a vase and then you just put it on the base and you can kind of take it into the living room and have cold lemon water so we keep them for that that's the lemons a brita um, filter thing 
Oh, yeah, basically, it's kind of like that, but less posh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 that should be what it's called. It's, it's, it was like <laughs> six quid from Matalan or something, um, which for, if people don't know what Matalan is, it's basically like a, a store that sells everything. Um, but yeah, other than that, in my fridge, um, I think there might be some chicken. Maybe. I'm not 100% sure. Not a lot. <laughs> Okay, right. I Chris, re- you suck at asking questions. Hey, no, 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 there's a reason for these. There's a reason What's for these. What's your favourite type of tree? <laughs> hey, hey that is, that's a good analytical <laughs> question. If you were a tree, there was one of the questions that Josie used to ask, um, pseudonym in chat. She used to ask that on the data mine of everybody. And it was a really good way to understand some a technical person's mind and understand what kind of things they would come out with i, I appreciate that so if, if if we were sat in you know a, a psychotherapist's office and we we're trying to understand his personality it'd be a good question for interview <laughs> purposes for entertainment right well, i thought this was the therapy isn't it this, <laughs> That's is, what this, I is, therapy. this is this is online stream therapy right okay then you 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 come up with some bloody questions and i've i've put a load together and i didn't fancy asking the others you do it next time <laughs> God damn it! Right. Anyway, don't, don't cry. Don't cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm, already, I'm, I'm <laughs> my eyes are already um, weak from lack of sleep at the moment. <laughs> weak eyes. Right. So let's move on to games then. We haven't played anything, so go on. Tell us about um, EGX Res to see what you've what you've been on with. Um, yeah. So there was loads of games there. Um, start off with I played a, a fair few of them. Um, they're kind of the standout kind of games at the moment, like they're, they're strong stuff. Most of it came out of the left field collection. Um, and then there was like a, an inside BAFTA bit as well. I'm not sure whether they were all BAFTA nominated games or whatever, but it was a, a BAFTA bit. Um, anyway, and there were some really strong um, games down there. Um, one of my favorites from that, and like this is probably the, the best game that I played whilst I was there. And this is going to sound really rubbish when I describe it, but it's basically... You've got an Arduino unit, which is kind of like a Raspberry Pi. Mm. Um, Into that, you have a a joystick with an accelerometer in it, and that's hooked up to some LEDs. And it's basically a one-dimensional dungeon crawler. You pretty much play as a little green LED, and you have to move from one end of the LED strip to the other. And like these little red enemies come at you, and you have to like wobble the accelerometer to like attack them and beat them. (laughs) It's amazing. It's like one of the best things ever. Like actually, in, like why? It's good. To, I, it, it sounds like something that I did at school, like put together in the electronics class or something. Yeah, but it but must it, be more than that. Well, it, it's kind of not. I think the thing that's really kind of captivating about it is a the lights. Like there is sound to it as well, but it's like all the lights that are in it, um, and also the fact that it's a game that's not just on a screen. Like the LED strip, like went along a table and up a wall and then over the roof a little bit, oh, and it right, kind of okay. went. So you had to kind of like look around and try and find it. It was really fun. It just kind of captured a bit of that kind of funniness about games again. Like a lot of games are, are tending to be dead serious. Like we're sending this message and doing that. This felt like a game that was just uh, yeah, just a bit of fun. Yeah, no, going back uh, to I roots. Can. Yeah, I like, I like yeah. that. Yeah, so that was really good. Um, but for some more kind of like, I'll, I'll say, gamey games, um, you got things like uh, Maya by Simon Roth and Machine Games Limited. Like that's really good at the moment. They're still developing it, but that was really strong. It's been going for a long time, Maya. Now, isn't it? I, fo- I it followed that been, uh, yeah. very early on, and it was I was always impressed by it. Yeah, like the 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 way they're trying to make it is super crazy like everything is properly simulated um which um simon was saying at the show is causing a lot of problems on their forums for early access they're getting a lot of people that are just saying oh this isn't working why is my like colonist just sitting down doing nothing it's like because they're tired what would you do when you sat down when you're tired you'd sit down and do nothing it's like oh this sucks they're all boring it's like no they're human kind of um so yeah it's causing some quirks um but there was a whole kind of room dedicated to uh idea xbox and they had some good games in there i didn't play a lot of them um but i got to have a look at the swindle um, oh i like the look of that that looks cool yeah what, what, um, so how did it play because i mean i've seen lots of gifs of it and lots of videos but i've, I've not played it yet obviously. can you describe um, it first of all for us because i've not heard of this uh the, the swindle is a I think it's steampunks. That, is it steampunk or cyberpunk? I uh, steampunk, I'd say more. Steampunk, the style yeah. looks more steampunk. It's a it's a two D yeah. platformer. Yeah, two D stealth platformer. Um, it's made by Dan Marshall of Sci-Fi, Size Five Games. Um, so you can find it all there. Um, it played pretty nice. Um, it felt responsive, which I think is good for a stealth game. 
like when you when you're trying to do something you need to deliberately be able to do it and kind of timing is key um and it, it felt solid to play um i didn't get to play too much like there was quite a few people around so it's kind of a case of sit down try it right everyone's bumping into the back of my head i'm gonna sure. get up and leave um so there was that but uh yeah it was a, a, a bit of good fun that was kind of from that section that was probably my favorite game from there i liked the uh, the hacking mechanism they having that as well did you get to do any of that or I, I'm honest, I didn't get to do that, but I have seen it. It does look cool. Um, but yeah, my main thing was just like running around, pressing buttons, trying to figure out the controls. And mm. then I, by that time, I got fed up with people that, hitting the back of my that's head. That's game conventions <laughs> all around, though, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like you have to try and cushion yourself in as much as you can, as close to the screen to try and let people get past. And still, you just get playing and you get not, not, it's just like, oh, come on. Um, How, can I, just a quick question then. How I'm, uh, he's, he's a fairly, um, you know, well known indie developer yeah. how how did he promote himself there then was it a big stand did he have lots of backdrops and things like that or was it um, just a small no it was basically the 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 kind of the xbox room um was basically just uh in the center of the room you had like a couple of baffle boards with everyone's kind of branding like posters mm -hmm. stuck to the back of them and then you had like big kind of i think probably about 30 40 inch monitors um all like in a row on each one and that was it. Um, maybe a couple of flyers on like the bit tables where they're putting the controllers and whatnot. Right. Other than that, though, that that was basically it. There was a couple of cushions in the corner. It was a real kind of low key feeling event, and I'm presuming which was kind of nice. I'm presuming the ID at Xbox. I don't. I haven't really looked yeah. at any of the stuff. Is that is that indie development at Xbox? Yeah, is that it's, it? yeah. It's basically independent stuff at Xbox. So it's there. Kind of you sign up for it. Um, well, you don't just sign up for it. You have to kind of pitch your game to them. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if they think it's, you know, an all right idea that they want you to further and put on Xbox, they kind of send you a couple of dev kits. Um, and I think they provide other support as well. But mm, fair enough. Yes, yeah, so that, that was that. Um, and then there was a couple of other kind of indie rooms with various different games, um, some good, some not so good. Um, one of the better games from like the main indie area. I'll probably say would have been uh, what's the name of it? So it's sub level zero, um, which hmm. if you've ever played Descent, yeah, years is, ago, years ago, yeah, it's very much like that. It's uh, proper. It's got rift support as well, and if they had like a stand with rift support and two like uh, flight sticks, and you could actually kind of drive around and kind of get more immersive there. But it runs on uh, just standard kind of monitor and mouse and keyboard, really nice as well. Cool. So that was that speaking was about. Speaking about Descent, there is actually a Kickstarter running at the moment for something called Descent Underground, which is um, a modern remake, uh, six, oh. act, six Degrees of Awesome Returns, it's touted as. I, I um, wasn't a fan of Descent, I have to be honest. I know, again, I know the game, but I, <laughs> it wasn't... It, was it a SNES game, or was it originally oh, around that era, or PC. was it earlier than that? It was PC, and it was ported to some yeah. of the, the first-generation 3D consoles, like PlayStation stuff. Right, okay. I should have, could have swore I played a Descent game on, on SNES or something like that. Um, I think it was a bit too game. hardcore for SNES. Yeah, oh, maybe I'm thinking of a completely different game then. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, anything else then? You play anything else there? Um, there was a few Off others mention. there. Uh, I played uh, for an, an indie event. It was a bit strange to see Bloodborne there, but I guess since they're releasing, they just want to kind of get a last little bit of marketing in. So I had another shot at that. Um, that seemed solid from software and doing a, I, I a really like the idea that I, I'm not being keen on well, it's not that I haven't been keen I've tried to play uh, Dark Souls Dark Souls 2 on PC yeah. but I've always had problems with it and I'll be honest I'm not I'm too busy to try and sort the problems out on my <laughs> PC you know um, and I didn't play them on the PS3 but I, I do like the look of Bloodborne and I think I might get it for PS4 it might, it's because it's an exclusive yeah. isn't it but at least a timed exclusive I believe so yeah um, and I really so, like the look of it. It sounds like it's uh, the, the combat's really difficult, really interesting. And there's going to be a lot of, you know, you have yeah. to dodge things in order to... Um, yeah, definitely. And, and sing. There's some, you can use pebbles or something to attract the attention of, of like, single mobs instead of getting them all to... You know, otherwise they'll all just engulf you and destroy you. Something yeah, like that. Um, that's... You can do... Like, I didn't actually experiment with trying to throw pebbles. Um, I tried to stick to just trying to play it a bit like Dark Souls, which I read um, an article, like, the day after I played it that said, From Software is encouraging you to play this not like Dark Souls. I was like, It's more ah, like Demon Souls, died. like the original Demon Souls. Yeah, yeah. so... Um, I took the Dark Souls approach of just trying to, you know, kite them one by one, um, but that doesn't work so well. And there are so many people, like, you, you, there was a section I did where you have to kind of run down like a cobbled street that's enclosed by kind of houses. And 
it's like a, an old kind of uh, carriage, um, like horse and carriage style hmm. thing there. And like, there's actually a guy like just hidden in the bit that you can't see. So as you run past it heading forward, he then comes out from behind you. So then once you meet the kind of the mob in front of you and turn around to think, oh crap, he's like behind you going, yeah. what up fella? <laughs> um, just to make your day even worse. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I think that's on my list, definitely. Yeah. So, and then there was um, the Devolver Room, which had Hotline Miami 2, uh, Titan Souls, which is looking really, really nice. Um, Titan Souls, Titan Souls. the best way to describe it is basically a mix of Shadow of the Colossus and kind of Dark Souls-y gameplay. Um, it's basically you're like a little girl with just one arrow you can fire the arrow and retrieve the arrow and you have to beat these massive hulking bosses it's basically like a boss rush game right um and it's Looks it's nice. really good though yeah it it's all done nice. in a pixel art style it i do like that style yeah did you get a go of hotline miami, miami 2 then i didn't it was swamped um and i thought i'm probably <laughs> going to buy it anyway yeah um, so i get back i've actually heard mixed things about hotline miami 2 though apparently there's a lot of design choices in it that aren't so great I know there's, it's got things like jungles in it, and it's it's yeah. not all within apartment blocks and within a suburban environment anyway. Yeah. Which I like I like the fact that he's doing something a little bit different. But there yeah. was also the argument that it was almost going to be DLC, wasn't it? It, it, it nearly oh it, yeah it, it, it you know it ended up becoming a game because the publisher well because he wanted to do it that way, and I think there was a few things that he couldn't fit into the original game. I don't know much yeah. more about it than that. I haven't played it yet, but I think I will get it. Yeah, it's definitely on my list of. Uh, games to get i've got a, a list of them there i've just actually on the uh, the steam cyberpunk sale um just bought um system shock 2 i uh, bought transistor and i bought it, i can't remember the name of it it's the, it's the i have like i need to scream but i have no mouth or something like that um yeah i have no mouth but i must scream i think it is. that's the one yeah, yeah. <laughs> like i knew it was something along those lines i've uh, i've got transistor on my wish list as well i'm waiting for the right time to get it and play it but yeah i played bastion and um i played it all the way through because i'd started it and i was like i've got to finish it but i found it to be a bit boring bastion great design I, great look yeah but i didn't enjoy the game that much and and the, it was quite predictable the upgrade um kind of system in it and but it was an indie game again so yeah i did find that with bastion actually once i got kind of i'd done the first area thinking yeah i've done like loads and then it introduced me to the the, the kind of the next bits and i was like oh, I, don't, I have to go through that kind of again yeah that's exactly <laughs> like, what i was thinking and yeah i, I did, kind of I, felt a bit fatigued by like kind of because it they like i think it would have been better if they kept like trickling kind of levels to you rather than showing you your level path because i thought christ that's ours Oh, maybe I'll come I, back to it later. <laughs> I didn't feel like I had there was enough transparency, and I felt like I was yeah. kind of move. I, I didn't feel as if I, I was finishing qu <clears throat> quick enough. It, as I, as you said, I felt fatigued yeah. by the end of the game as well. I felt like it needed yeah. needed to finish quicker earlier. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, just went dry. Uh, All right, cool. Anything else I've mentioned there then that you? Um, they had Guild Wars 2 um, Heart of Thorns expansion, but the queue for it was like four and a half hours at all times. Are you uh, an so MMO I, guy I then, things. do you? Enjoy your... um, I, I, I dabble in them, which is a really strange thing to say, because most people wouldn't dabble in something that A, usually costs a subscription, or B, <laughs> takes a lot of time to actually properly get into. Um, but I like to kind of dabble in them, like I'll go and play a little bit of the secret world, and I'll kind of do a few missions and enjoy that world, and then I'll maybe play WoW with some friends. And I want to try Guild Wars. I think I'm waiting for one to kind of capture me so much that I must do nothing else but play it. Um, and until then, I just kind of dabble and mix well, around. WoW was the last one to do that for me. I yeah. haven't played a game. I, I, you know, I'm clean. As, as someone said last week, I'm, I'm, I'm wow clean now, and um, I won't ever go back to it. But I am waiting for. I'm hoping it won't disappoint me. But I'm waiting for Deus Ex Universe. I'm a, I'm a bit of a Deus Ex yeah. fanboy, and I really want that to be awesome. It's yeah, probably, I know, be... Lou. It's probably not going to be, but <laughs> sorry, I know. We can but dream. I, I, we can I'm, dream. I'm, I'm, I'm an optimist, though. I'm, I'm an optimist in that it's going. It's going to be brilliant. All right, then. Let's move yeah. on. Let's move on to the next section. Awesome. Lou's favourite part, it is the way of the exploding <laughs> list. <laughs> That's only because he hasn't done the uh, the artwork for it yet. Oh, oh, he's yep. got he's got more ideas now. We're getting, <laughs> oh. What's that? It was dust settling. Oh, is that dust? It's not it's yes. not glass. So, right, I like that. Um, 
Right, so yes, I've got I've got a list for this week, unless anyone else has a list. So just for, to explain, the this section is where we, we, we used to have entire shows, two hours where we were talking about a list of things that we enjoyed and we prepared for it. Now what we do <laughs> is we throw a subject up in the air and then we all try and think of something and we spend about 10 to 15 minutes going, uh... <laughs> so it's dead entertaining. Um Ha, have you, uh, as as the guest, as is there a list of anything that that you may th want to get anyone in chat apart from Sudo who keeps talking about bloody food and games and wants us to <laughs> wants us to uh, talk about, yeah talk about various different <laughs> variations of food in games. Um, but if you, have you got have you got anything that you, comes to the top of your head that top tip your um, So so lists of things I, I haven't really no. Um, okay, so I'll I'll give you some examples of of what we've talked about before. We talked about favorite protagonists. We talked about um, favorite weapons. We talked about most hated sidekicks, uh, best cinematic moments, most interesting like looking environments or most beautiful yeah. environments. If there's anything that comes to your head, um, I quite like the idea of favorite room, not like a whole environment, but a singular room. Like for me, like the start of that would be something oh. like the the safe room from Resident Evil, because that was our proper safe room. Like, I like that. Like, I like that, I and we'll like go with that. that because that's a good guest suggestion. I've got I've got a few that I think are quite good, but I'll we'll save them for another time. Favorite the, room in a game. The, the beginning yeah. of Doom Two, the very first, like opening part of the entryway, E one map one. You kind of on a yeah. uh, stage, looking down some steps, going up to a, a doorway, and there's like a zombie in the doorway. It's back to you. I was watching Just a John classic. Romero uh, talk through of that um, the other day. He was, I think it was Dev's talk about the games, or I can't remember what the series is called now. But John Romero was going on about it, and he was, he was, he spent so long just sat in the front entryway explaining why that looked exactly like it did what every single texture was for and what all of the challenges they had and all of the issues and then he was talking about the fact that he hates symmetry in games as well and he hates uh, he hates the fact that you know a lot of games will it's just lazy he sees it as lazy there's only one place in that i think maybe in the entire of doom one that is symmetrical and it's right, this map's doom 2 by the way oh whatever doom 2 then maybe <laughs> it was that anyway it was the entryway on whatever yeah, I think it was, it was. You came in and there's a there's a there's two corridors, isn't there? And there's a door in the centre. Is that the one you're talking about? No. Or are you talking about the one with the chainsaw behind you? Yes. Yes, right. that's the one. I'm talking about Doom One. Then sorry, he was he was going through Doom One. Yeah, Doom One. You start in like a big uh, room and there's a window to the right and then some stairs to the left and a doorway. Windows to your right. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 And there's a secret behind you with the chainsaw thing. No, there isn't. Not in Doom One. There isn't a chainsaw in Doom One. All right, I'm thinking Chris, of Doom come 2 then, on. I think it must be the bit I'm talking about is that's in Doom 2. That's the, the beginning and that's the entry of Doom 2 then. And you go through that first door or first that, through that first corridor go, and then... Go, go into a corridor and it turns to the right. Yeah, and then when and you then come... there's a door to your left and that, it takes you into a computer room which is symmetrical with a secret in the right-hand corner. Yeah. I know this map. Like, I know this map better than my <laughs> own house. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I, I've ignored everything I just said. I don't know anything <laughs> about anything ever. But yeah, that room is very iconic. I, I don't know if it's just because of the fact that you spend so many, so long in there, because that's where you always start when you play Doom 2. But there is something about those opening rooms that is something really cool about them. Well, I'm going to throw into the mix the Mega Health Room in uh, the Edge DM1 Quake 2. Yeah. That's an iconic room. room because there's so many trick jumps in there. There's so much, so much time has been spent battling over the mega health, battling over control points because that's basically that you is can, the control point of yeah, the map. Yeah, you, you control that room. You control everything. You yeah. are the boss. But it's also quite easy when you lose control of that room for to get swarmed from multiple directions. And oh god, every time I talk about Quake Two, I want to play it again. <laughs> Don't ask what they were. Don't ask what they were. I just picked up. <laughs> Dead jellyfish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, other other rooms then that are, that are interesting. I oh. can't actually think of any. My mind's completely blank. This is what happens because we don't prepare for this. We <laughs> yeah. throw it on each other. We spend uh, like fifteen minutes explaining why we can't explain. <laughs> talking over each other. So Come I, on, I've chat. got another one. Go I've on. got another one that I like. Um, the starting room in. Portal One with the countdown timer, where you've got Glados just introducing you and kind of you wake up and it's 
all of that, and you're kind of looking around. Yeah, glass cell. like yeah, you're basically in a glass cell. No, that's cell. two. Portal two, isn't it? Is that portal two? I thought it was in no, one. Portal two is where you start off in that dodgy hotel. Oh, it's not a glass yeah. cell, is it? You fall into the yeah. glass cell, don't you? Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah, I can't remember um, the beginning of Portal one. I've only played it through once. You know, I played it yeah, on the 360 it's... orange box, and I've never played it on PC. Yeah, you basically kind of, I think it fades in from black and you're just in that cell and there's like a 60 second or so countdown timer above like a part of the wall. And yeah, you can just mess around in that room. But that room's the first kind of point where you think, all right, what the hell is this? And you've got the little radio playing in the toilet. And my first reaction was, I'm going to throw the radio in the toilet. Um, and then, yeah, that kind of, I just, I like that for the fact that it's kind of a start of your journey where a game goes, right, you've got this brand new game. You're about to start it. Wait a minute. <laughs> I, like like, that, yeah. I can't, ah, I can't okay. remember that myself but yeah that's, that's good the test chamber in Half-Life the dreams I made yeah. in that room I, I remember that so vividly when that happened I was shit yeah. scared I didn't know what the hell was going on that is such a great room I where believe... great things happen isn't that event also known as the Resonance Cascade? The Resonance it Cascade is, is that's where we go. the name of the show is from. Um, just, just for those who may be having problems in Twitch, um, if you go to hitbox. If you can hear us, go to hitbox.tv forward slash Resonance Arcade. We're streaming on there. Um, and there's also chat on there as well, which I'm monitoring. So you can still keep in, keep in, in on the conversations. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry for interrupting you then. Yeah, I haven't been able to get on Twitch at all, so I can't see any chat, unfortunately. Uh, the chat's working for me, but I'm not streaming the video, so I don't, I can't see that. Um, it so, will yeah. be on YouTube anyway afterwards. I thought, I thought of one there, but you said favorite rooms, and I've got one that I absolutely despise. But no, that's no, not rooms in games. Let's yeah, just rooms. use it as rooms. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's that one that I've mentioned on the show before, which is more of a corridor than a room, but the one where in fear. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh god, yeah. You got to go at the end of the corridor, then go back, then go back again, then a poltergeist comes out and makes you fall off your chair. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the one where you pulled your speakers out of there? Thinking yeah. your, your parents, you screamed or something, and your parents were, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's great. That wasn't a good night. No. <laughs> other rooms, other rooms. You know, one. This isn't particularly, it's, it's something that sticks in my mind. Um, there's a room in um, Silent Hill Frozen Memories. In fact, there's a lot of rooms in Silent Hill and Frozen Memories where you go in the room and it's different every time you play the game. It's it's the same puzzles in slightly different configurations, but the room is totally cha has totally changed, and it all depends on what you selected or what you what questions you've answered with a psychologist at the very beginning of the game. You have a little psychologist session, and you can you, you have to do like proper well not proper but you have to do um, uh, you have to like paint like draw a house and 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 colour it in and then later on in the game when you come to the house it's coloured in roughly how you coloured it and even if you That's were really cool. rubbish at it <laughs> and it's really cool it's a really eerie story because there's it's just run away you can't there's no weapons or anything like that it's not even like a, um, Alan Wake it's got the same kind of feel to Alan Wake in that you, You've, you have to run, that's the main premise of the game, but um, you have a flashlight but it doesn't do anything to the enemies, you just have to run like fuck every time the, the world starts changing and I, the, so many times, I, pl I played it with my missus and so many times she just kind of threw the Wiimote at me because we played it on the Wii and, uh, and it, was, <laughs> it, it, it was crazy, it's good, I really like that game for, for what it was and considering it didn't look brilliant I think it was really cool, And but the, I liked the fact that when you went in these rooms that even some of the puzzles were different as well. I don't know. It's it's hard to explain. You have to play it, I think, to understand. And play it a few yeah. play it a few times to understand what I'm talking about. Um, other rooms then. Other rooms. Let's give this another five minutes at the most, eh? No, there isn't yeah. any other rooms. I've there thought isn't of. any other rooms at all. <laughs> it's like there are no other rooms in games. Period. <laughs> That's it. It's just those three or four rooms. Well, That's I mean, it. I would um, I would throw antechamber the the intro room into that because that is a totally different type of room. Definitely, yeah. The, you know, the fact that, that he wanted to, Bruce, Alexander Bruce? Alexander Bruce, yeah. that's his name. Yeah. Um, he, he wanted to have a game that, that kind of challenged everything about games. And even the, the menu was different. Even the fact that when you pressed escape when you were playing the game, it took you back to the intro room and that was the menu. And then you could go back to any part of the, well, any part that you'd already visited and then read yeah. puzzles. Uh, I liked that. I liked that that particular yeah, that's pretty cool uh, i'm just trying to think of other kind of specific 
I'm trying to think of like, you know, hub, it's usually hub areas, isn't it? So if you think yeah. about... Like, I was, yeah, I was just thinking about Hexen, actually. I, I really like the first proper level in Hexen. Not the, the intro level, but the first hub level. And the centre of that, that level is like kind of a courtyard with some rooms off to the side. And you keep kind of going to, to different parts of the, the world, that, well, the, the kind of, the, the, the levels off the hub. And as you do things, like... The hub changes, so stairs will appear and walls will move and things like that. It's really cool, actually. You keep coming back into something new in there. It's a bit like what you've just been saying about that room or that puzzle that's changing. Mm. Um, it's nice that it, it changes often enough that it doesn't get boring. It's like, oh, wow, I wonder what's happened now when you go back and it's totally changed again. It's really cool. That, and Hexen does that very well. So I think probably all, all four of us are probably thinking about 3D rooms because when you say room, you think of... The room yeah. that you're in. So what about two D games? I've got a couple of two D ones, but I don't know. So I'm thinking like the the, the room in Braid, the, the the house where you you basically run you know between all the doors. Oh right, yeah, where the rooms are actually hub. the levels. Yeah, but it's still not it's not good enough. That it's not good yeah. enough. <laughs> See, mm. the I, um, it's a beard stroking moment. The boss room in Smash TV when you first meet Mutoid Man. And there's a massive, you, you, basically every room looks exactly the same. You've got this square room with, with four doors at the north, south, east and west. You come into this last room on the first level and it's basically, all the doors are locked and there's a massive hole in the wall. And you think, what the hell, this is a bit different. And there's no enemies. And suddenly Mutoid Man, which is basically a huge torso on tank tracks, comes through the door <laughs> and starts kicking the shit out of the room. Tank with you in it. That's a pretty uh, tough one. The... <laughs> Hyper Emerald Room in the Sonic series only because I could do it and Lou couldn't. Hyper, I don't even remember that room. Uh, uh, you had to play with the Sonic and Knuckles add on cartridge. Well, I never even owned that game, so that's probably why I couldn't do it. No, you tried to, <laughs> well, Max, before. So, what about uh, we've got to say the coin rooms, the, um, the, the pipe rooms in, in the original Mario, then got to add that in there. I know it's just it's an iconic room. More than anything, isn't it? It's not very good. Or yeah, interesting. like yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, it's one of those that you know. I think everyone's seen that room. Um, just having a look through my Steam list here, actually trying to think of some kind of other ones. I think one of the main things that's maybe not so much like I don't know if you call it mainly a room, but probably where people spent quite a bit of time would be places like the Golden Saucer in Final Fantasy VII, like. There's, there's, you know, the the sound of it, the actual kind of the busy feeling atmosphere, all that. People spend a lot of time there, or you know, that's your house in Pokemon. <laughs> no, that's a that's a fun park. That's a theme park. That's an exactly. <laughs> I, 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 as you say, it's not quite a room. As a room for that game, though, the um, the library under the um, Shinra Mansion in Nibelheim, That's yeah. a really really cool room where there's a lot of exposition happens. Mm. And when you walk up to one of the uh, tanks and it says there's a uh, there's fingernail scratches in the tank that say stuff. Mm. That's pretty cool. That's God, like a lot of cool stuff happens there. I could talk about rooms in all kinds of games. I'm just looking at my, my game list and it's like I've got Monkey <laughs> Island on here and there's so many rooms in that that are cool, but I'm trying to pick one. Yeah, like a standout. Yeah, room, that, yeah. I, that I spent ages doing a particular puzzle in or, or it was a really cool puzzle or something like that, you know? Yeah. What was the... Um... Uh, the last room in another world uh, was it? It's an Coliseum? arena. Yeah, it's like an arena coliseum sort of thing. That was that was cool. cool. Yeah. What about what about one of the most frustrating rooms for Lou, at least in on the world in the world, is um, the the generator room in Scarabre oh, on, uh, on tr in tribes. <laughs> Uh, the amount of times that I spent in there just uh, the, uh, in fact they just explored all of the generators and Lou would be sat there and I, I'd love seeing it as well because I'd be, I'd be invisible running around in my infiltrator uniform playing tribes renegades and uh, stick all my satchel charges on, run off, set them off and I'd just be sat there and he'd be like for fuck's sake, for fuck's sake <laughs> that's to one of my favourite the rooms context, basically there was bases it was capture the flag essentially um but rather than capture the flag, Chris decided he would basically blow everything up in your base so that all of your mechanical objects like turrets and force fields just stopped working. And that's all Chris would do forever. Oh, then I'd get the flag and cap it a few times while you were repairing all of that stuff. But <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. What was uh, that other room in another world, the one where you could go up the top and shoot the, uh, the big glass ball that was hanging? 
And if you timed it just right, you could see a little reflection walking under. You could knock out the oh, guard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you were crawling through a pipe, weren't you? And you could see yeah. the guards and the reflection of the metal ball. Kind yeah, of. And shot it down and hit him on the head. Just to, you knocked him out, and that made that next portion of the game a little bit easier. I like that because I think it was one of the first times I actually saw like some dynamic in the environment that could actually. If somebody didn't have to do but could still affect the outcome. Yeah, it was a very interesting play, so. puzzle, that wasn't it? Yeah. The bell lift in Bioshock is yeah. a good little room. That was a that, the original. That's, yeah, well the original is obviously the first introduction yeah. to Is that Bioshock the way you go world. down you go down through the, the lighthouse into the yeah. Uh, and no, yeah, you go through the lighthouse Rapture. and you go basically through the entire of Rapture and it kind of you know, you've you've got uh, is it what's his name, Ryan? John Ryan? Andrew Ryan. Andrew Ryan. Andrew Ryan. Um speaking to you over the over the intercom and he's, he's not not speaking at you he's doing an introduction yeah. of rapture and it's just a really <laughs> cool cinematic moment where but you're in one room for the entire duration yeah I, well if you say that i'd also say the the um train from the start of half-life because you can't that, say half-life again you you've said half-life too many times <laughs> no, every time you say half-life an interesting room the environment outside of the carriage is interesting well that's the same train with chris's is shit. that's yeah. the same with chris's though i, I was I, yeah so shut up yeah <laughs> Um, however, um, every time you say Half Life, my half, my personal Half Life halves. So stop all right. it. Half Life, Half Life, and, and Half Life. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll never die though. Uh, Theoretically. Yeah. Um, I, I can think of a, actually a, another couple. Um, one of them being the kind of the initial room in the Stanley Parable, like the office room that you start off in every time. Mm. Like, that that's pretty good. That took um, me at least three or four goes to realise what the fuck was going on in that game. Yeah, the game is such a mindfuck. It's just I like, loved it, though. Uh, I loved what? the ideas. Loved the, the ideas. The memorable room in that, for me, was the nuclear launch room. The, oh, you know, right, the yeah. The full room, that was pretty yeah. cool. Because the especially baby. there's loads of, t like, screens and buttons and stuff, and they don't seem to do anything. The, ba <laughs> you run the around baby room. The buttons. Yeah. The baby room was the most memorable room for me <laughs> there. How long did you spend? Uh, quite a while, I think. About I, I didn't. I just. I didn't minutes. even press it once. I just let it go straight in. You heartless <laughs> bastard! I just. I just thought this is going to be one of them that's going to go on. But if you do it for four hours, apparently you actually beat that particular task, or you get an achievement for it. But who's going to? I mean, there's only one guy on the planet. So I think, masochistic. Done it. Yeah, someone who's put it up on YouTube <laughs> as well. All four hours of it. <laughs> um, um, right, let's let's put this to bed unless anyone can think of anything yep. else. I I think I think I'm out. Yeah. Just just scanning the last few of my games to see if I can uh, come up with anything. Oh, I've got too many games to scan. Right, bugger it. Let's move on. Yep. Right, so onto games. Uh, sorry, onto games. Onto gaming news, rumors, new releases, anything that's. Uh, caught our attention or caught my attention because nobody else seems to care about uh, giving <laughs> us news and stuff first of all Oculus is potentially not being released this year I feel very weird about Oculus at the moment because I've not, no, I've not used my Rift in a little while mm. and in the little while that I've not used it some really really big advances have been made um, you know the, the Vive or Vive um Valve thing is getting a lot of really good press. There's people talking about it, like skeptics of VR, saying this, this is it. This is where it crosses the line into something which is viable. Hmm. Um, so it's put me in a position where I'm, I'm suddenly the owner of obsolete tech. No, you are. Yeah, definitely. And you will be, even if <laughs> you buy the quickly. consumer one that comes out. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. This is why I'm. I, I mean, this is why I'm not an early adopter because I, although I, what I tend to do when I buy something is I'll buy it, I'll use it to death, and then I'll put it aside and I'll never sell it, and it'll just sit there and pile up and pile up and pile up. Hence the big pile of rubbish that I've got over to my right. Um, I, I, I don't know about Oculus. I don't know about VR in general yet. I mean, I'm. So you're still a skeptic of VR, even though there's lots and lots going on. I'm a skeptic of the first consumer release. I think. I think after that, and when it starts becoming mature, and they get they get mass consumer feedback from it, not just select few developers, and not just people who are developing games for them, and and extreme enthusiasts. I think when it when it's when it's big, then I'll start maybe believing it a bit more. And glory supporter. 
I, no, it's not that. <laughs> it's it's that I don't have the time to to invest my my interest in it. I think at the moment. Fair enough. Uh, but I am. I am. I do want to say something quickly about what you just said. Then the Vive thing and the fact that Morpheus, um, the PlayStation version, and the fact that the is v, Vive is the Valve version, isn't it? It is. Yeah, the HTC yeah. Valve. The, those those all sound like they have better functionality than they do. Yeah. Than Oculus and better for the release version as well. So either Oculus are going to have to up the game. Or they're going to get left behind, even though they've got some of the greatest, you know, some of the arguably greatest minds working with them on on what you'd think would be the greatest minds in VR. But does that just because, like for example, John Carmack has worked on games his entire life, does that mean he is a VR expert? I mean, he's he's a scientist, but he's an expert in many things mm. in a transient way. Stephen, have you have you used VR yet? Have you experienced? I have. I, I own uh, a development kit too. I oh, right, developed okay. stuff for VR. Um, I also went to a talk on the HTC Vive, um, headed up by Chet Falasek at um, Resd, um, and he spoke about some of the kind of the the problems that VR has got and mm -hmm. how they're trying to use the Vive to kind of overcome them. Um, I got a couple of points to make about this. One, the Vive is getting rid of one of the biggest problems from the fact that a um, according to people like Gabe Newell, anyway, it has zero motion sickness for anyone. I don't um, believe that stat. I yeah, it seems pretty pretty out there to say zero. Like, come on, one or two people I must feel yeah. a little bit. Mm, but like that's that's a big thing. That's a big thing to kind of convince people to kind of give it a go. Secondly, they are kind of when they sell it it'll be with a couple of little kind of basic controllers with their like haptic feedback panels in it they're putting in like the steam controller mm -hmm. and that will actually basically they've got like a uh, haptic feedback with a button on the thumb and then a squeeze um but it will actually one-to-one -one simulate your hands so at the moment the biggest immersion breaker for vr is you put on an oculus you go oh my god this feels so real you put your hand in front of you and you don't see it oh you yeah. whereas when you've got these <laughs> yeah Whereas when you've got these, oh, and that's the other thing they're doing, it's actually a room experience rather than a seated. Like, yeah. you can do seated. It's got full, it's, full motion yeah. tracking, hasn't it? So you can yeah. move around. But so it's got, got, got room it, mapping as well. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's got it, the, the kind of the trackers also send out lasers that laser map your room um, out as well. Um, but the other thing is, like, when it comes down to Oculus, I think they're in big trouble when it comes to being first in, last out. Like, they keep delaying it. They, they capitalized on all of everyone's interest like they were the big thing talking about by the end of this year i think everyone will be like yeah we've we've got our vr sets now bye you know like most people will probably look to spend about the same they would on a console hmm. if not a little bit more for a specialist piece of kit which i think is what the vibe is probably going to come out as i think it will come out as about 200 to 300 quid um, when you say specialist you mean platform specific as in pc specific or yeah, well, I, I mean, basically, you know, you get the, the people that will use the, like, the Omni treadmill and, like, or the, it's like the Virtuix Omni and all that. Like, they'll get all of the stupid, crazy stuff. They'll have a, a room in their house that will be dedicated to this with, like, smoke machines and projectors and paintballs <laughs> that hit them when they get shot, all of that kind of crazy stuff. Well, we were talking about some of last week. There's, there's this um, Oculus add-on. I can't remember what it was called now, the face uh, mask it's, thing. It's like this horrible right. face, yeah, it's, it basically oh. like blows air at you and releases... Yeah, it fires, it fires metal filings into your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about immersion. Every time you get shot, you actually get shot. Yeah. <laughs> it's a gangster. So, like, comes with its own gangster. Yeah, so I, I definitely think, like, there'll be that kind of specialist, but I think for everyone else, they'll just want something that they can either like obviously anyone that owns a playstation 4 and an xbox one they're obviously going to wait for microsoft and sony's you know the morpheus and i know the hololens isn't vr but microsoft have recently said oh it doesn't mean they're not going to do it um yeah so th no doubt they'll probably have something planned so no one's buying an oculus or a, a htc vive for their consoles it's, this is mainly the PC ground we're fighting over just now. Remember that P the PS uh, that Sony and Microsoft are both well versed in the gamer communities, and they understand. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not saying uh, Oculus aren't, but Oculus have arguably got the least amount of experience in yeah. gaming, even though they've got some great gaming people there. Maybe not marketing people. I don't know. Maybe they announced yeah. too early. We know what it's like as indie developers. You announce your game too early, people lose interest yeah. very very quickly. Yeah, I, th I think the main problem is they announced early because they didn't think anyone. I think, like, 
Palmer and that got to a point where they were like, right, well, we, we seem to be the only guys in the game here. We had this kickstarted. We've got millions. We can keep doing this. And then they got bought out by Facebook. And then they were like, right, this, this is the cash roll. Keep going. Our R&D is surpassed anyone else. Mm. And I think they forgot that probably other big companies like Microsoft and like Sony and like Valve have got their own big stacks of cash that they sit on anyway. And I, I think they kind of expected that because no one else was saying anything at the time, that it was a case of, yeah, we can just get away with doing it and capitalize on all of it. Um, and we'll just be transparent and open with everyone and that'll be fine. Um, then everyone in the meantime has gone, oh yeah, everyone liked that. Here's 600 million or whatever. Go make our version of it with HTC, that kind of thing. Um, Mytholoy in chat's just said uh, he's, he's going to get a Vive regardless, but he's only going to get one that, sorry, hang on, one that's for sure. Uh, it doesn't make sense. He's going to get a Vive, he says. But he was talking about holodeck experience, so, you know, the fact you can move around. However, yeah. how big is your room? I mean, we talked about this last week. Um, yeah. Uh, in England, we don't have that much room in our in our houses. Yeah. So you need yeah. a specialist room for it. And and even then, there's the danger of running into a wall. And But then there's the sensors, isn't there? And the yeah, yeah it, 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 it lays when you're near a, Yeah, it tells you when you get near a wall, it shows you, like, a grid overlay. Yeah, like well, playing a football game when you're running around, or you're playing something, yeah, something where it's a little bit more active. Through a wall. <laughs> if you if you're sad enough to play a football game in VR, when you can just go to a well, local sad field. Enough, don't, don't even say that. You can't call geeks sad. You are a sad <laughs> geek. We're all sad geeks. At least, at least I'm playing something in games which is not really doable in real life whereas it's pretty easy to go and have a game of football you know what you've got a good i didn't even listen to your point then you've got a good point. <laughs> <laughs> it's what yeah, so, it's what, yeah. yeah unless you're really really bad at football in which case playing a computer game might be your only outlet it's the future i'm telling you <laughs> it's the future it's all, everything is going to be online eventually especially with the advent of virtual reality as soon as yeah. as soon as you can plug yourself into it and you get a better than life chip in your brain it's it yeah. game over game over That's for humanity for not for uh, me, I'm not getting involved with that shit. I, I'm happy with my keyboard and my mouse and me going outside to get food and stuff. Yeah, like I think that speaking of getting food, like that's a, a big thing. Like so many shops at the moment, like, you know, you got all the big supermarkets do the online shops. I think as soon as VR becomes standard commonplace, like every home at the moment has a TV, a computer, and probably one or another console of some kind. Eventually, every home will have a VR unit. So um, why not have shops that you can just go and pick up your milk? That's perfect. And, that, and it gets over to your door. That that you know what? That's a brilliant idea because <laughs> VR no, shopping. It's not. No, it bloody well is because you know what? <laughs> yeah. I hate I hate going to Tesco. Other yeah, supermarkets yeah. are available. So why I, would you want to sit there with a the VR headset and go to a virtual because, shop? Because, because, because the website website have to be using as fuck. One of them, one of them, one of them, one of them, one of them. No, no, order. you'd go up to them and you pick them up and you put them in your trolley or whatever. You do your scan and shop. You don't do that surely if you were enjoying the experience, right? Right, let me, let me explain a problem that I have with shopping, a couple of problems. One, I go out and I catch a cold nearly every time I go to Tesco because there's people coughing on you and bud barging into you, and especially when it's busy, it's bloody annoying, I hate it. Right? Yeah, dirty humans. Dirty, dirty humans. Wash yourselves more often, you bastards. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and that, I mean, that's my, my main problem with it. And it's obviously the time as well that it takes. Now, I don't like shopping online. I don't like going to the... the you know the Tesco checkouts because they will automatically choose different foods for you if they don't have them in stock. Yeah. I'd rather just not get them foods, or I'd, I'm sure there's options for that and all that bollocks. But you know, it's it's a faff. But I'd, I'd still, I want to see my food. I want to still pick it. But you won't be seeing it. You'll be seeing no, but a you would if it was a virtual. Of it. If it was I'm virtual. If it was a virtual world that was a real world, or maybe you had it's a surrogate or something. going to that... map every individual piece of broccoli. <laughs> For this, you pick it up and go, oh yes, I want this particular piece yeah, of broccoli in my virtual world. There, there is they, a, will do, there is, they will do eventually. Yeah. There is a counter argument to it. Many times when I've done kind of, I, I once a month I do a big shop online of just, you know, I'll go online, I'll go through Astro or Tesco's horrendously bad website trying to find all the pieces of food I need and I'll look at a bag of let's say like chicken legs or something and it'll be like it's a kilogram right kilogram of chicken legs that's like what six or seven maybe and I get the bag and it's like too big to fit in my freezer and there's about 20 in there and I'm like ah shit if I'd seen this I wouldn't have bought it um like <laughs> yes, things like that <laughs> <laughs> well they've got 3d printing soon you'll be able to 3d print food don't worry about yeah, it you can just print I've your own chicken why not yeah, they got 3D printers that print uh, pancakes. Print they printed soup. the world's smallest drill recently. 
it's like 0.75 of a millimeter or something and why? it works why would you use that what what for for dr- if you, it's, 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 it's one of those balls. little you know it's drilling those paws little, those little you know, toy skateboards so you can drill <laughs> i don't know <laughs> <laughs> or maybe for a very small construction worker um, I just want to say out there again, just in case anybody's still having problems with Twitch, it seems that there are issues. Um, go to hitbox.tv forward slash Resonance Arcade and you can watch us on there. It's also slightly lower latency as well. Um, right, let's move on. Anyway, that's enough talking about virtual reality. We could probably, every time we get on VR, we talk about it for ages <laughs> and I say, no, 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 no. And Lou goes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you go into your, yeah, you're going to plug things in your head and soon you'll be a zombie slave. Yeah, yeah. To the machine. Back in my day, we used to <laughs> we used to play games with mouse and keyboard. We're going to be those old people. We, we are. That is, we that are, is our you, generation. You can't talk. You're already you're already you're a youngling. You are. You aren't you? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm twenty four. Anyway, yeah, twenty four. We're, <laughs> we're, I've just turned thirty three. I think this, this month. Something like that. <laughs> right, um, not strictly gaming related, but Gamergate related, and we don't generally oh talk about Everybody's Gamergate favorite gate. too much. But um, Moot has left 4chan over Gamergate. I thought it was quite an interesting thing to if talk If anyone's about. followed 4chan recently, that is just a cesspool of racism. Oh, it's it's and been cesspool forever. It's yeah, been it a cesspool is. forever. So um, I can see that the Gamergate was kind of the, the straw that broke the camel's back, and we're talking about a fucking big load of straws here. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. But um, it's still it's still a interesting because he's been there forever. He's been there through lots of racism, lots of controversial pictures, lots of controversial everything. He's he's had all kind he's had lawsuits, all kinds of things. But he's finally left because of Gamergate. He said he's been thinking about it for a while. I'm not a 4chan goer. I don't. I've never followed it. It's not my Possibly thing. Possibly Gamergate and the fact that he's not made any money out of it. What at all? Ever? It's fund- fundamentally impossible to make money from because no sponsor would ever touch it with a. And nobody with with a. Oh God, yeah. Oh God, An I was infinitely just say long something that would get me probably get me hacked <laughs> or DDoSed. But let's not <laughs> yeah. say that. Eh? And anyway, I just thought um, it was something worth mentioning. I don't know if anyone else has opinions on it. My only opinion of it is that 4chan is, as you said, a, a cesspool for this kind of thing. Like, Hive of scum and villainy. Yeah, like, if, if this is what broke him, then great. All that's really told us is that he was okay with all the other stuff, maybe? I don't know, like, ah, loads of racism? Yeah, great. Loads of other random shit. I don't follow 4chan myself, but I, I know its reputation. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's all fine. Uh, actually... This, this whole game game thing has to, that's my line later you yeah. know, it's like <laughs> it's like what, what what a time to to leave just you know it's like oh yeah no i've had a sudden change of heart after well how many years is it like he's been there like forever basically he made it yeah he's he started oh, with oh, yeah sorry team. yeah so well yeah, it, so I, you know i just i I don't even know what Gamergate is anymore, I have to be honest with you. I, I, I've never really been that interested that's, in it. And that's it, because they don't even really know what it is, and I'm, I'm going to get attacked here and screw it. It'll get one, me more Twitter One, day, we, one um, day we'll get a Gamergator on and they can explain it to us, but then again, oh, I bet we get a yeah. second Gamergator on and they'd explain it differently. So Yeah, exactly. Like Half of them don't know what it is. They're like a dog chasing their own tail. Yeah. Like What would they do if they caught it? It's like, okay, we give you everything you want. Um... <laughs> It's like, yeah, it just doesn't, nah. Like, it's, it's, the gaming is just a, a big waste of time. The, the only thing that I like about it is the fact that it's put it into the spotlight that things do need to change and that that kind of behavior isn't acceptable. Like, it's made a lot of people that otherwise would have just brushed it off as, ah, you get that in every industry. Mm. Like, it's realized, oh man, this is massive in this industry. You've Let's just said in a, in a sentence basically what I, my feeling is on it. It's, it yeah. is nice that it is highlighting the issues, but it's still, they're doing it in the wrong way, you know? Yeah. They're doing it and they're, they're flipping it on its head and making it even worse. Yeah, well, let's exactly. move on. We don't like to get yeah. too political on Ooh, Resonance no. Arcade. <laughs> Uh, right, so ransomware targets Unity 3D. This is something that uh, my my friend Josie, pseudonym, who was in the chat, I think she's having Twitch problems, so she's disappeared, but mentioned to me yesterday. Um, there's some ransomware that's going around at the moment that basically takes your computer for ransom, which we know what ransomware is, but it also targets the Unity platform. So if you're building a game in Unity, it can do it in there. It, I'm going to put a link in chat. It's just for people to be aware of it to the very least, you know. Um, not much more to say about it than that. Well, I, just to say that the um, the attack vectors appear to be in Explorer and Opera. 
Uh, yes, I mean I use I use yeah. Chrome, so I'm so if you use an Opera, then you deserve everything you get. And if you use an Explorer, <laughs> then you definitely deserve everything you, you know get. What? I, I yeah. isn't too bad these days. I, I really think isn't. the moral of the story is upgrade your browser and make sure you have like security settings. Be mm -hmm. sensible. End of like don't if, click anything you're not sure of. And if you don't know how to use a computer, don't ask any of us because we're not going to help you. Bugger off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't know. Let's be fair. We don't actually know. No, we don't. We don't yeah. know anything about computers, and I'm, I, I'm I, happy I, with that. I, I work in tech support in my um, actual job. Don't so tell everyone that. But... They'll be on your Twitter following <laughs> but, you, asking you for bloody upgrades to RAM and. But I won't help anyone. So there we go. <laughs> I, I, eight hours a day, I deal with helping people. That's not what I want to do when I get home. So yeah. <laughs> no, no. I said every time I go and see my parents individually, my parents yeah. divorce, so they're in different houses. Every time I go and see them, I spend a couple of hours seeing them or whatever. Every second of the time that I'm there, I'm I'm helping the. Who was that? Who was that? Bloody rave music going on. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm spend all the time helping helping them fix their computer issues. Yeah. Uh, right. Um, all Steam users must now disclose paid recommendations. Now this, so this this happened a while back with curators. If curators are get being given, it, and this happened with YouTube as well, I think there was a big hoo ha yeah. about it a while back. And in fact, it's kind of part of the GamerGate thing ish. Kind of, it's kind of kind of all kind of jammed into one big ugly mess. But um, now, if you are a normal Steam user, such as any of us, you have to declare that a part of their terms and conditions you have to declare that you have been paid or you are uh, receiving some kind of gain monetary or otherwise for recommending something and that's a thumbs up or that's a comment or anything like that <coughs> i know that's foreign to us because none of us do it for yeah. monetary gain i don't actually use the steam community that much myself um but it's uh, just thought it, it was interesting to to mention again i'm gonna paste that into chat for everybody I don't think it's too too bad. I think it's sensible. Yeah. That I have to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, it's a it's a solid idea. I think it's like kind of more more clarity on that is uh, a big deal because I think a lot of the time, and I think it's it's a big deal for your average Joe that wants to kind of go and buy something as much as it's a big deal for the person sending out the message. Like your reputation could be broken on saying this game's absolutely great and it's a heap of to if that. You know, if the people telling you to, you know, paying you however much to say it was great, if you didn't disclose that, people would think he honestly thinks this is good. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I'm not going on any more of his recommendations, and I mean, that's that. I have like, to be honest with you. I, th I don't think many curators would do that anyway. Would I yeah. mean, not not yeah, the respected no. ones, you know? Yeah. No, but I think there's a, you know, a lot of the the more. I don't know, like the, the less high profile users may just take it, you know, when you're trying to get yourself out there, you take every opportunity you can. And I think it's also maybe their, their kind of, um, you, you must have seen some of these posts that are going around at the moment that about app store ratings and that the, there's people in certain countries where they'll, they'll sit there with hundreds of phones and they'll just click yeah. recommendations, they'll upload yeah. things and, and you can pay for that kind of service. I mean, I get, I get 10 emails a day for that kind of thing, you know? I'm not saying I follow any of them, but you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, I mean, it's horrific that that happens. I think this is a move, in my eyes at least, anyway, it's a move towards a fairer community and a fairer rating system. I'm not yeah. saying that it's particularly prevalent on Steam, but I think, and, and I, I think that the users generally pick up on these things and they're a fairly informed user base on Steam, but I'm not saying everyone's the same, you know? Yeah. But it's nice. I think it's nice that they're moving yeah. towards a fairer kind of community. Yeah, I do agree that it's is more towards that kind of fairness and kind of good opportunities for actual kind of good content and things like that. Like where you get all these ones, as you say, you can spam hundreds and hundreds of reviews easily. If they're purchasable. You can spend like 100, 200 and get yourself 50 reviews or whatever for your game. And that then makes that game look a lot better than it is. And it actually... Like to have less of that dilution will be a, a big player to the people actually genuinely making games. Again, I'm not sure how they're going to police this. I haven't read yeah. into it in too much detail, but I think all it is is a terms and conditions change. So I think it's probably they're just going to ban users who don't conform to it, or they've got a good reason to ban users, which again, it's not a problem to me. I uh, I see. Um, also, from the article, from that particular article, I saw another link about Steam broadcasting, which I wasn't aware of until recently. And I think it's just a Steam a streaming service to Steam users while you're playing games. 
Yeah, this is interesting. I mean, obviously, Twitch um, and streaming online games now is bec- not streaming online online games, but streaming games online has become a huge thing. Um, especially as Nvidia hardware has it built into the drivers. Um, I'm not so sure this is n- even necessary. Uh, well, again, it's Steam trying to get well, Valve specifically trying to get in on on the modern trends, isn't it? I mean, look, they bring out Steambox, they bring out a VR thing. They're, they're, they're a big technology company now these days, gaming comp- company, and they're always going to try and compete. I guess. I mean, I suppose the, the technology for this is already there because it does the home stream and stuff, so it's not much of a stretch of the imagination to move this into doing it online, I guess. Well, how much... I think it, I it's not a, a streaming website or anything like that. I'm not sure if no, it's... No, it's just streaming to services, I think, I imagine. I'm not sure if it's... A, again, I haven't read the article in any detail, but I, I think it may just be streaming to your friends or stream. But again, it's some. It's a new feature that Steam's got. And I like the home streaming option. I like I like yeah. the fact that I can play games downstairs on my lap, on my laptop or whatever, um, but this is a bit different. I, I personally don't have a use for it because I've already invested in stream in Twitch, already invested in Hotbox to an extent. You know, it's happy with what I'm doing as it is as it stands. But it could be I don't know maybe less of a less of a strain on your system. It's something I might investigate and have a look at. Yeah, just to see. I, I'm I'm sure it'll be more of a strain on the system than the, the hardware things like shadow play and, uh maybe but it might latch into that you maybe don't know. you don't know all the streaming uh, software xsplit obs etc that all latches into it so i guess so <clears throat> oh well okay nintendo ah finally mate i'm glad steve's here because i've got a fellow nintendo friend uh, fan um, bored already Sure. Uh, Nintendo <laughs> have uh, I, this is something that it's, it's not really relevant to us but it's big news at the moment in uh, especially in the uh Eastern culture is that the word? Japan and all that—it's Eastern, isn't it? Yeah, what we call it, it. Is, yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, Nintendo are f- f- they're forming a partnership with uh, DNA, which is D E N A. They're a huge mobile communications company, and they are finally releasing some of their IP. Not releasing, but I think they're still in control. But they're, they're, licensing they're it, yeah, right? licensing their their IP rights to allow for some mobile content, mobile games, things like that. So that means that you're going to start, hopefully, at some point, start seeing Mario on your mobile. This is, they're coming very late to this game because game mobile gaming is dying. Well, Nintendo are also particularly well known for either, the, they're either an innovator and they start something, but they never do the very best idea of it. I mean, they started VR, really. When you think about it, with the virtual the boy virtual back in there, they started <laughs> rumble packs on uh, with the N64. I'm sure there was things before that, but they popularised <coughs> it. The first to have uh, wireless controllers as well. This kind of thing, yeah. So I mean, the first they to have motion to control, you. which was a, I mean, the Wii's taken off, but what the PS PlayStation Move stuff, I've got one. It I've looks used shit. It, that's I why it looks it like twice. a novelty dildo. <laughs> Um, but it's nice. To, I think it's nice to see that. I, I think it's nice to finally see them doing something. But you, you said they're coming late. It's still, I don't think it's dying. I think, coming very, I think the mobile gaming is definitely on the way out. I think they've tried and tried and tried to do something other than Infinite Runners and Match 3 games and have realised that that's the only thing that really works on mobile. Well, it's, a, it's the market, isn't it? It's a casual market. It's for people who are not into like the hardcore side of games. They just want something that they can play on the it's toilet it's or gonna on be, the train it's be, or... But the, the, there's already, it's like the, there's already the optimum type of game for mobile now. It's the stuff like Candy Crush and things like that. It's things where Nintendo can't really, I can't see them making penetration to the market. I can't see them doing anything new. It's Nintendo. They will make, yeah. peni- they will yeah. penetrate. Mm, I'm yeah, not I, sure. Nintendo always penetrates. Yeah. <laughs> Remember how Bad. big Nintendo are though. Uh, you, you, we forget. Because we in in the in again the West that's not they're not as big as the Sony's of the world and the uh, you know the Microsofts etc. In, in terms of like a hardcore gaming market, but in terms of the casual family, you know, easier to get into kind of games, they're huge across the world. Yeah, they are massive. They outsell PS4 and, and Xbox. With, every, and every time, I mean, every every time I look at a stat, Nintendo are up here. You know, they've. The ridiculous they sell 10 times more what than the other consoles yeah. combined i think a really 
kind of I don't think they're coming in too late. I almost think that the only reason they'd be coming in too late is because they would have been perfect to almost start this. Um because you gotta think about it. Their their games are a lot more kind of well, they're they're I say family friendly, but that's not really the right term. But like you've got games like even if they release like the classic Zeldas and things, people love those games and they're easy to get into and they're not like, you know, you, you can pay fifteen quid for Final Fantasy or something, but that's a, a huge, huge game. Like it's not something that people are gonna be more drawn to. You have to have already liked Final Fantasy, I'd say, in order to get into that. Like you wouldn't get into it on mobile, whereas I think with stuff like with Zelda and that, I think it's compelling enough to keep people going. I think if they release a lot well, of their classics they won't though that I've, I've, a mytholoin chat he tends to be fairly knowledgeable about these things he i think he reads he re reads games news sites for a living um he, right. he just said that they're, 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 he's they're not releasing old con old content they're only releasing new content which doesn't mean new titles new zelda yeah. and mario titles won't come out on it it could be very specific mobile content it could be yeah, it could just be, yeah. allowing their ip to be used in apps you know for all if we you look know at the videos that are going around on youtube uh a lot of the games tend to be kind of like puzzle based ones completely new games but just with the nintendo ip slapped all over them mm. which we've got to remember as well is that nintendo were the ones to start off the mobile gaming in the first place game boy. game boy yeah and they've got a very well they've got they've had several lines of successful mobile game mobile gaming platforms a lot of them using such screen technology this, this is a bit that confuses me that they they, they would be diluting their own market because they so obviously own the handheld market in terms of the DS. Handheld, but not it's mobile. It's ubiquitous. Handheld, yeah, it's handheld. Is, handheld is slightly more serious than mobile market in, uh, mobile gaming in terms yeah. of in terms of you know the market aim. But the You've market aim is mass. The, the, there's still a humongous amount of people, much many many more people than will ever be serious gamers it's really hard to categorize gamers i suppose but do you know what i mean when i say serious gamers i mean people who play games like us you know that they're into the fps's and the uh, people who don't just play games on the toilet yes that's what you're trying to yeah. say isn't yeah. it yeah <laughs> well, or, or on the you know on the or while they're driving you know <laughs> you know what i mean it's a, that, that that's the casual market it's people who are just filling time up in between dentist appointments or something you know because we have at least two a day in england Please don't do that, by the way. Don't don't listen to Chris when he tells you about driving and playing games. No, no, don't. Sorry, but yeah, if, no. if you do, you're a fucking <laughs> idiot and you deserve to die. I'll get arrested <laughs> or kill somebody. Right, let's move on. Um, last week we talked about the Titan X very briefly, and Lou went, oh, I "Don't care, fucking ridiculous." I don't um, want a thousand pound graphics card. But they, sorry. They have they have now released the uh, twelve Titan X twelve gig memory. Twelve gig memory. Um, yeah. the price and specs it is around a thousand dollars uh the specs is it 12 are... gigs of actual memory or is it like one gig of memory and go, 11 gigs of like go into, uh, special. Memory. Go into <laughs> yeah. this go into this article and uh scroll down to the comments and somebody said exactly the same they've said is it is it, <laughs> is it 11 and a half gig of memory and 500 meg that you can't access <laughs> basically like the the nine uh, the nine yeah eight 970 970 yeah i bought a 970 returned it and got a 980 <laughs> yeah lou's, like, lou's still got his 970, 970 yeah, but he's but not tried 4k, 4K yet yeah. um, but anyway this basically this titan x 12 gig is for people who are running f uh, f 4k 6k rigs some of, you know some of that's atrocious or, yeah it's for or people like say... me who, who, who i don't run i will never run 4k probably i probably can't be asked but i'll get it because i'll be like oh but i'm a game dev and i could use 12 gig of ram and i can't yeah. <laughs> I think I can. Yeah, I think the 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 main kind of people they're attracting are definitely the 4K users. Definitely the kind of multi-screen kind of you know if you've even if you're on you know like a, like two and a half K or whatever people are calling it these days, like like surround setups for that are still quite expensive to come across. If you don't want to have multiple cards in your rig um, and also VR mm. on kind of high-end games like Project Cards, which is never going to come out because it constantly <laughs> it's going to be delayed until all the developers eventually die of old age um it's but, still a beautiful like, experience to sit in your car not motionless when it's raining <laughs> on the car that's a really brilliant vr experience you know what you know yeah. what this this just brings me back to one of my original points on vr i i think i would buy it when the resolution's right when it doesn't look yeah. like when it doesn't look like a computer screen yeah when I think it looks that's... like i'm in the world that's immersion yeah. Yeah, it's like, and I think that's kind of what this Titan X is also kind of geared towards. Is saying, look, to run these, you're going to need something 
pretty damn hefty. Get one of these and you'll be able to run any of these titles at kind of a standard, like, what is it? It's like 1080 per eye on the HTC Vive or something like that. Um, yeah, and but I still Oculus don't think that's ridiculous. good enough, though. I still don't it's think probably not. Like a 1440 is the sweet spot. 1440 per eye is the sweet spot, and 4K is probably oh, what yeah. you'd be after. Don't ever do that again. I can see the pixels. I can see the pixels on my screen when I get that yeah, close, and like, it's going to be like that. So 330 pixels per inch is declared retina. That means that your eye cannot, at any distance to it. I, I know. I'm, I'm on a you know I'm yeah. on a 1080p yeah. monitor or whatever. With, <laughs> yeah. It's not obviously so, not two 1080p yeah, so, monitors strapped to your face for the Oculus VR would be a bit ridiculous, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. This is amazing, but my head's stuck to the floor. Kid gaffer tape. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> but anyway, I think yeah, I think we can agree. One of my criticisms about spending that much money on something like that for VR or for 4K, 4K maybe, but for VR at the moment, I'm not sure VR is one in a position where it's good enough yet. Why not wait until VR is out a little bit further when these kind of graphics cards are much, much cheaper? You can buy one, it's more commonplace, you know, that kind of Because you know what it's like, you know, whatever it is, Moore's Law. In a year's time, this will be almost obsolete, you know? Yeah. Um, the problem with Moore's Law now is not the fact that things are changing so quickly, it's knowing which things are changing because CPU speeds have stayed at 3.5 gigs. But speeds mean nothing anymore, the it's the amount years. of cores. Yeah, exactly. like, yeah, the, so it's the cores, it's, for is nothing. It, but it's also screen size, it's like Moore's Law, you never know where it's going to uh, like manifest itself now. It's mm. going to happen somewhere, but you're not sure where. Yeah. I mean, at the moment, the talk that it's all, all the talk is around uh, lowering the the size of the architecture in nanometers, isn't it? I think there are eighteen yeah. nanometers or something. What Nan I heard was that they're reaching, reaching the kind of limits of what silicon can do, and yeah, yeah. Well, gallium and stuff like that. That's yeah. Intel have said that they're when it gets down to ten nanometers, um, they're not going to use silicon anymore. They will find they're researching another way of making the chip that's going to be smaller than that like 10 is the the smallest that you can realistically make silicon yeah you're into weird <coughs> quantum effects don't you at that sort of yeah. size when they're talking about using graphene i thought it was gallium they were exploring but i'm sure there's an article about off. using graphene because of its yeah. ability to transport an electron down the branch without any loss of energy what about it here first yeah uh, they're talking about um they're talking about using organic materials. Is that, is that graph is graphene organic? Uh, no, it's carb. graphene. Graphite. I don't know what graphene is. Fucking hell, sorry. It's graphite. It's, it's just lead. <laughs> pencil lead. It's an atom thick layer yeah. of carbon. You, right. you have a computer made out of pencils, basically. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That'll be so, pencil you can Make your own graphene at home with a piece of paper, a pencil, and some sellotape. tape. All right. Thanks. <laughs> I'm not going to though. You can. Got I'm better things kidding. to do than make my own graphene. <laughs> yeah. Probably have more. I was say, all right, Neil Buchanan. Like a chunk of it as opposed to a hardened cylinder of it. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. We obviously don't know what we're talking about anymore, so <laughs> let's. Uh... Well, the, the, the Science. Titan, like get, getting back to the Titan X, kind of my, my last word on it would be that it's the. A lot of people don't see the point in these cards, and to, to an extent, there isn't a point in them other than it's for the people that can just go. Yeah, why not? It's kind of like the reason Apple have put out a ten thousand dollar watch. It's for the people that can go, yeah, I can have one of those. I'll grab four, put them in a rig, stick some liquid nitrogen on them, plop them to hell, and hit the top in a leaderboard because I make millions doing it on streams and on websites and whatnot. You see, I can I can understand the Titan X more than the bloody Apple ten K well, watch. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, even it's, if it's that, that, that was ten K, I could still I'd still think that was worth more than that watch is. Yeah. Because that's just a fashion statement, isn't it? It's not technically yeah. amazing or anything like that. Yeah. It's just it's just a fucking watch that connect. You need an iPhone to use. You need an <laughs> iPhone. To use. Right. <laughs> the uh, last Guardian, which we've talked about a few shows ago, um, the IP lapsed to the US. Um, IP lapsed for it, not the IP, the um, patent. Um, but they've it's renewed it, I believe. So it's that's kind of nice. good news for those people who are interested in this. Sorry, what? Trademark, not the patent. Trademark, patent. No, I think it was a patent that lapsed. Oh, no, a patent application. Yeah, you're right. Oh, sorry. Um, so, yeah, the, 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 it's good news for people who, who are fans of ICO, the ICO series, uh, Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, actually, is that the same? 
same company Look, that did that looks like so. it yeah i think it is yeah i think it is made by the same like i don't think it's exactly the same team i don't think it's i'm not sure if it's still team ico or no. whether it's like a weird mishmash of like most of their developers um and like their team with some other talent in it as well and kind of pulling resources from elsewhere well, most of team but, ico have went to to do that new game called rhyme uh, which is yeah. which is coming out but I, I think I believe. like it did one the last guardian if the last guardian i suppose ever does come out it'll be seen as a it's one of those spiritual successes yeah um whereas like technically the true next game that team ico have made would be the whole you know rhyme thing that you were referring to so yeah like i i don't know where i really stand with the last guardian like i'd love to see it but at the same time like I stop carrot and stickiness i was i was i was kind of well the thing is i think they've had other priorities and that's why it's it's again it's bureaucracy politics that have stopped this kind of thing yeah. uh, from coming out but i think i i mean it looked okay to me it looked like yeah it's a game looked a bit of fun <laughs> i don't know but it's like i don't care that much you know i'm only bringing it up yeah. because it seems to be big in the news you know it's yeah i'm sure it's going to be cool when it comes out it looks pretty yeah it's about the level yeah. of it. Like, I, I think part of this whole letting patent slip and that is to keep that excitement going. It's a, a really quick way to make some PR without having to hire a marketing team. Like, because yeah. no, no company on the face of the planet would let a patent and a trademark and because it, it's not the first time it's happened, especially for this game. Like, no, no company that was really conscious about keeping their IP and that. Like, IP is so important and like patents and things. Like, that is so important. No company worth the salt lets that stuff just, oh, we forgot about that again. Let's renew that one. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. No, you're right. And it's, it's yeah. as you said, it's cheap. And the thing is that journalists, game journalists, will monitor yeah. these things and or they'll yeah. be on some kind of list telling them when, I don't know, I don't know how these things work. But yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, the uh, get onto some really nice dry political stuff now. The new mm -hmm. budget that has just been uh, announced today or yesterday, I think. Uh -huh. um, I've seen George Osborne with a briefcase lately. It's yeah. one, it's either today or yesterday. Oh, hey, God, there, there, you go. Go. <laughs> there he is. Good old George. Oh. I didn't know Lou's you were on the, the podcast. <laughs> so um, anyway, so the new budget is actually looks like it's quite good for the the industry. Um, Yuki, the UK in <laughs> what's it called? Sounds so much like Nuki. Interactive Entertainment. Uh, <laughs> Yuki. Oh, Yuki. I forgot what Yuki stands for. Anyway, the good guys, Yuki. You know, they're, they're on interactive Entertainment, isn't it? Is, is that what it is? Probably. It's a, anyway. It's um. It's the kind of the trade body. It's the uh, the yeah the trade body for the games industry. So as a uh, again as an independent developer, I can sign up to them. I think it costs five hundred quid a year or something like that. And then you get loads of benefits, and you get advice business advice things like that i haven't done it personally but it is you know if you get successful it's definitely worth investing in um i spoke to a few people at yuki as well and they're they're, they're good guys you know they're, they know what they're doing and they can point you in the right direction but anyway the, the new budget i haven't again don't know that much or don't care too much about politics but it has got um uh, it has got good connotations for the, UK, the the industry. Apparently, they've revived the the prototype fund, four million being invested, and four million in the skills investment fund as well. Which and, and these are all game development related. Anyway, enough of that. Paste, <laughs> yeah. the, paste the thing into chat for everybody. Uh, right. So on to a few rumours that I have read over the last couple of days. First of all the um the new upcoming star wars battlefront game uh, i think is a dice uh, an ea subsidiary yes it yes. is yes so um dice are developing the new star wars battlefront game i'm a fan of the battlefront games in general i've enjoyed two was brilliant it was awesome i spent so many hours playing on hoth and various other places um but they apparently the new one battle star wars battlefront 3 is going to have going to cover all six of the original films which two kind of did it covered it covered a few of them but i think two came out when episode one was released roughly around that time because there was definitely some scenes from episode one in there i can't remember the name of the bloody I call myself a star wars fan um if you, you are a star wars fan if you can't remember anything about the the, the prequel trilogy no no yeah. I, I'm, I don't mind the prequel trilogy i'm not i'm not I'd I'm not precious about these kind of things. But no, there's some um, 
There's one particular level I can I, I remember playing. I can remember the layout of it, and you fight against the uh, the separatist droids and stuff. But anyway, you could play. You could also play as Jedi's in uh, in Battlefront Two. But Battlefront Three is covering all six of the the current Star Wars films, which I think is good because it's more content. It's more stuff. I'm I, you know Disney own it now, and they're just going to keep throwing stuff at it until it's dead. I think now, as it stands. Yeah. I'd rather Disney owned it than George Lucas, to be honest. I haven't played any of the Battlefront games, but I, I really? obviously I've played Battlefield, and it's the same engine. And I would, I'm very interested in this. I'd like to see Star Wars done in that engine because I think it's a fantastic engine, perfect for this kind of stuff. Well, I, I, so I could be all over this one. I, I'm so. almost the opposite, if I'm honest. Like, I don't know. Like, Battlefield Hardline is coming out or is out now it's or out. is very close to being out. So I don't know. It's getting <laughs> slated as well, it. and we knew it was going to uh, get slated. Yeah. And, like, that that's the thing. Like, it doesn't feel. It feels like a reskin for Battlefield. I think with that engine, they have to be very, very careful. I know Star Wars comes with its own set of, like, they're going to probably get, like, thousands of gigs of assets and things from all the films and all of that and study them, you know, and make sure that they, they stay true to the aesthetics of, like, the actual Star Wars kind of films. But at the same time, the engine has this really distinct way. It's kind of like you could tell when someone was working with, like, an early version of Unity. All Unity games had a look yeah. to them. Um, I think the same is true with the Frostbite engine. All Frostbite engine games have a look to them, and that look to me just, I don't know, I, I think I would still feel, even if they did a really good job, like you're not quite getting a, a, a solid new engine that needs... Yeah, it, it needs something new, I think. It needs a new engine for them to do it. I, um, I, I like the Battlefield engine, I have to be honest. I didn't play Battlefield 4, and I've again heard lots of bad things about it I heard bad things about the hardline beta because uh, they, they went a different route with that and they released a beta first didn't they and it recently got released um, it's been slated as basically a it looks pretty it's different they've tried something different with hardline because it's uh, it's all you know cops and robbers based and it's kind of like got lots of different new game modes it's also got a lot of old game modes as well so I don't know I, I think they made a big mistake with four hardline it looks okay but I, this this to me will be different because it is a totally different it's not meant i mean battle, battlefield um one and two weren't realistic they didn't look realistic they weren't intended to be they, yeah they, you know they were just star wars games they just they had a bit of stylization uh, stylizing to them battlefront sorry not battlefield um but I'm I'm looking forward to this personally because I, I I've not had so much fun playing a game for a long time playing the especially on Hoth when you can you can get in one of the um, air wing things not air wings fucking fly things on Hoth when anyway you you, fight, you, fucking, <laughs> you fire a, you, you you fire the thing on the atats and you go around them and there was there's a couple oh, right, of yeah. I can't remember the name of them flying things. I don't yeah, think I've no. ever known it actually. But anyway, they they were um, that that was just so much fun trying to do that and like and plus you can get in at arts plus that's a very specific experience. That's like you know the the the, the bit from the movie, the memorable bit, bit from the movie, and everyone's basically like, okay, the match starts now. Everyone flies around and tries to wrap a wire around some legs. Okay, we've done that once. We'll do it again. Okay, that's going to be boring now. Yeah, See, the main like, problem is with it, this whole thing is that it's EA and the only reason that EA <laughs> are doing it to make massive amounts of money and if you read further down in the article it says that it's going to be spouting an aggressive DLC plan that's the, oh. yeah that's what DICE do oh, DICE, yeah. DICE do that yeah, that's what Battlefield 3 and there's also this hero system which is obviously going to be something that you could probably pay to have as well as it probably will be yeah it'll be uh... yeah. so it's just going to be Battlefield again isn't it really it, it will come out with a premium. There will always be there will be a premium section oh, yeah. to it. Like uh, a season pass is almost a guarantee because mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like there. The Frostbite engine is an engine that is set up to well, apparently cope with aggressive DLC strategies and re like it's got strong netcode, believe it or not, um, that can handle a lot of people. Um, so like. I think there will definitely be a season pass for it. Um, but no, you're right. And to be fair, you guys saying this has made me think, oh, right, yeah, it is. It's yeah. EA. You're right. Shit. Yeah, you have to remember it's a dice made EA published game. Like, there are certain things you're going to get 
that will be par for the course now. Like, EA and DICE aren't suddenly going to turn around and go, actually, like, we've made a crap ton of money selling premium packs for all these different things, but tell what, because it's Star Wars and because everyone loves Battlefront 2, won't bother with it. No, they'll be like, everyone loves Battlefront 2, let's just milk it. Um, mm. And, yeah, they're going to want a lot of they're cash. They're start an opening message, what, you actually want to enjoy this game? Please insert your credit card details. Next LAN yeah. party, next LAN party, I reckon, guys, we, we try some Battlefront 2, because I've got, I've got a disc. I, I really, my, it, I'm just thinking there'll be three of us, and the fucking maps are huge. They're like 128 player maps, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's where I think the the, the frostbite engine will come in strong if they're going to keep. Because I remember before it got scrapped, I think it was with a different developer at the time, but they released that video of the scrap footage where you could actually get in. Uh, I think at the time it was something like a Tie Fighter and just fly off for an X Wing, and you just kind of on the planet surface and you just went bye bye and you're off and then you're having a nice space battle for a bit like i think if anyone's going to be able to do that well dice will be able to do that well hmm. um, and i think that's kind of yeah that's the the evolution of the air combat that they do so well in the battlefield will actually be space combat and then Oop. the kind of ground combat will be there so i think that'll be it rather than having fights just in the skies you'll actually go to space and have your fights out there yeah, that uh, there was there was one in Battlefront Two that uh, you could you started off in uh, you were in space and you could you could fly between yeah. space stations. Uh, just brilliant! I loved it. Again, there was a base you could <laughs> blow up, so that's why I loved that one. Right, let's uh, move on to the next thing. And to those who are in chat saying it's not live, we are live. By the way, hello. Uh, uh, you 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 yes. just disappeared for a moment. I, I, Chris. I clicked. I turned my camera on and off because I went all blurry for some reason. I'm not sure why that happened. <laughs> um, so yes, hello. there's quite a lot of people started joining and leaving for some reason. The chat's going a bit crazy. Not many people talking, but Ooh, lots of people yeah. coming in and out. But hello, yeah, uh, I hello think that everybody might be, who's just joined. And... Yeah, I think that might be because they're on Twitch. It might be an idea just to spam the hitbox link in the uh, yeah, Twitch I chat. I, I just have. Um, so All if, right, yeah, if any of yeah. you guys are having <laughs> problems with Twitch, please, uh, please go on hitbox. Although we aren't too far from the end of the show anyway. We do start at half seven GMT. So um, sorry, it's nearly it's nearly half nine. So um, so yes, one last one last story that has caught or rumor that has caught my eyes. This is a bit of clickbait. This as well, I think. So I may be I may be advocating clickbait going on here. But um, <laughs> Netflix has predicted. This is this is a bit weird. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, I know. Hang is, on. Hang I on, saw this one. This is clickbait delicious. I know it is, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> Mixed videos are predicted. <laughs> right? No. Ne no. I don't know why. I, 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 you know what? I'm not even going to bother. I'm not even going to bother. You're no. right. It's a lot of shit. <laughs> no, oh, Netflix. Let's Netflix. Let's the possibility of it. Yeah. Netflix. This is a rumor, of course. It's it's clickbait. Um, uh, Netflix has predicted that the uh, PS4 and Xbox Ones are going to get 4K releases by the end of this year. They reckon. Nope. Well, I'm um, still waiting to hear from Clark Shoes before I make any decision on that. They can bet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. They, can, they can barely, <laughs> they can barely, as it stands, sustain 60 frames a second at 1080p. So fuck off yeah. with your 4K releases. <laughs> to, to do that, they would not only have, like, I can understand maybe a, a bid to make the slim versions, and maybe they could add a 4K output, but actually, to make a 4K running system, like, well, the, NVIDIA have just released a, a $1,000 graphics card in hope that people will be able to play 4K. So unless you want, like, a good $1,000 you know console if not a bit more to when you pay for the rest of the components hmm. and the fact that they're trying to build it yeah good good luck like yeah no, this is another <laughs> apple iwatch thing isn't it where yeah. what? like sensibly any person yeah. who would go out and buy a 4k xbox one is the type of person who doesn't know what a 4k xbox one would actually do <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so it plug it into it a 4k tv that it can't, hasn't actually got any 4k source I, material to watch on the graphics cards have, that are on them can't, aren't capable of 4k uh, i mean yeah, yeah, and capable, if they upgraded it if they upgraded it it's not an xbox one anymore it's an xbox one version two isn't it it's or an xbox two <laughs> Yeah, like I, I have a theory on this. I think what Netflix were maybe trying to get at is that they will come out with slim versions of the console that will have HDMI 2.0 output or DisplayPort, something like that, that will then be able to output Netflix video and stream video at 4K resolutions yeah. rather than the games. Good call. I think yeah. it's what they're trying to yeah. say. 
That's but it's idea. obviously clickbait to try and make people go, oh, my Xbox has got more powerful. No, it I'll didn't. be honest with you, it worked with me because <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I actually, you know what, I didn't, <laughs> yeah. I didn't because I read it in a magazine. I read it uh, uh, as a rumor in a magazine and then I went to find a link for it to show in chat. So I haven't even read the article after be honest with you. <laughs> Yeah, I saw the link and went nope. anywhere because don't all ultra HD TVs? Well, are, are they already smart TVs? So yeah. In which case, they're going to display Netflix. It's their 4K rev a 4K resolution from source. 4K resolution requires quite a good um, graphics processing unit. I don't think most smart TVs would no, have enough. No, smart to do TVs it. are like, 1080p stuck at 1080p. I think. Yeah, I don't think they like go to, to than actually that. stream 4K video, you need to have a pretty good graphics processor in there. Which I think is what that article is really trying to say. It's going to be capable of putting out 4K video. And they also, bearing in mind, they also need a much better. People need a much better internet connection as well oh, yeah. to stream that because it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's you know more than twice the bit rate probably yeah pro tip anyone who thinks they can put output 4k video go on to something like the linus tech tips channel play one of their videos at full screen at 4k and watch your internet burn like it's back in 2002 <laughs> you know <Yeah. laughs> like it's yeah like i've got a pretty hefty internet package and mine still takes like it, it buffered a couple of times trying to get a 4k video out well, uh, next week's Resonance Arcade will be brought to you in 4K. Um, <laughs> 8K. <laughs> 8K. <laughs> anyway, so yes, that's it. That's all the news that I have this week. Has anybody else got anything that they've not put you know, not put down that they uh, might interest, uh, be interested something in? Something that caught my eye, um, kind of gaming news, but um, there's a, a new movie uh, called Pixel... Oh, it's gone. Uh, <laughs> a movie called Pixel. Yeah, <laughs> it's basically Wonderful. a movie. A movie about um about computer game characters attacking the real world. I've forgotten the name of it now. It's called Pixel. Pixel. Like, I think there might be a subtitle, Pixels. but it, it yeah. Pixels. Pixels yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, I've never heard about it. It's got uh, Adam Sandler and Peter Dinklage in it. <laughs> yeah, Peter Dinklage um, making a, a Nicolas Cage decision to show up in all of the bad films as well as all of the good stuff. Um, and um, yeah, yeah Adam Sandler, God. It just popped, just popped up, and I've never heard of it. I would have thought I'd seen something about it, but yeah. I, I, I think it's only just been put out in the wild, isn't it? Like, they've only really just announced it, kind of. Um, and yeah, no. Possibly. I feel like as a gamer, I should have known about this earlier. Like, I knew about um, Wreck It Ralph and things, but it just popped out of nowhere. I only knew about Wreck It Ralph Goodness. because I, I went to the cinema to watch Batman Summit some other Batman film and it happened to be advertised at the same time I hadn't heard about it in my gaming circles and I seem to have gotten very very blurry for some reason hello yeah not yeah. quite sure what's happening there yeah, my camera's resetting you, itself you've every into 4K. five seconds I have I've won it to 4k and your internet connections <laughs> cannot handle it that's the problem oh. <laughs> Right, so yes, um, let's. unless anyone has any other business, not just gaming news related, any other games that they've remembered that they've talked about, that they've played, I think we should uh, probably wrap up now. Well, hopefully by yeah. next week I will have played, um, played Hotline Miami 2. Cool. Yes, or a game, yeah. A yeah. game. <laughs> I, a game. Well, at the weekend, we've actually got another stream coming up um, this weekend. We have uh, a guy called Matt Chelan, or Chelan. He's, he's American, I'm sure he'll let me off for... Uh, for forgetting how, for not knowing how to uh, pronounce his name, um, from a, a, a game called a, a game. Oh my God, Chris, wake up! Um, from a website called Another Day Another Game dot com, and he uh, and he also does the Game Walkers, which is another kind of review site, I believe. Um, uh, but yes, oh, oh, well, we, we've we have been Resident Arcade. I'll let uh, Steve pimp whatever he needs to. He wants to pimp, Stephen. If you've got anything All else right. that's uh, relevant um yeah i suppose uh, you can go on to my twitter which is below me um on the stream it's not actually below me i have legs instead of a, a twitter handle um <laughs> but yeah if you go to on there you can catch up with all my kind of development updates i do ramble about other things but it's it's mainly games related um i post screenshots of what i'm working on all the time um you can also get to things like my uh portfolio and whatnot from there that's where i'm most active um, other than that, I don't really have too much to say at this moment. Um, the only thing I would say is if you do follow me on Twitter, watch out for a video going up within the next month or so, which will be uh, a proper decent announcement to the game I'm making. 
Cool. Um, so, yeah, that's probably the, the most pimping I can do. Good stuff. Well, um, sorry for the technical issues we're having with uh, with Twitch today, and sorry for the blurry cameras and stuff. But <laughs> for some reason, that I, I would highly recommend not recommend getting a Logitech nine thirty E because it breaks every five bloody seconds. I think Steve's got one as well, and he has similar issues with it. Uh, I'm considering chucking mine at a wall uh, at high velocity and buying another one soon. Chris, you look like a real player video from nineteen ninety seven. It's amazing. I've watched porn <laughs> at that resolution. Bad day dot MP4. MP, MPG, sorry, MP4 in 1991. No, Jesus Christ. Dot RP. Uh, dot RP, yeah. Oh, God. Real player. If, even, if you, even if I if, like, went onto the real player website, my, my computer would blue screen back then. It was horrific, that piece of software. I'm glad that doesn't exist anymore. I'm glad that depreciated. Anyway, so yes, let's close the show. Stop rambling, Chris. Um, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Chat has been fairly active. Thank you for, for being there. Cheers to everybody who's watched. If you have liked anything you've seen, please subscribe to our channel, www. Well, in fact, go on our website because we've got everything on there now, all the links to everything but hot, uh, but Hitbox. But Lou's going to sort that out very soon. He said after the show, but he's probably going to do it this weekend or maybe no, next weekend. This weekend. Or... Oh, right, you oh, did no. say this weekend. Uh, www.resonancearcade.com. Uh, we upload all our videos to YouTube, www.youtube.com forward slash Resonance Arcade. We tweet our schedules on Twitter.com forward slash Resonance Arcade. And that's it. I think. No, Facebook.com Residence Arcade as well, where Lou attempts to update it occasionally if he's in the right mood. It's, it's just not, he's not reacting now. I like it. I like yeah. it. Anyway, <laughs> thanks a lot, everybody. And thanks to our guest. We'll see you on Saturday, 6 o'clock p.m. GMT. Bye-bye. See you later. <laughs>